Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional. I am in a parking lot at the restaurant. We're out celebrating. Since Jill's feeling a lot better, we're just celebrating with a night out. And I'm just taking out a little bit of time to spend with you. And I thought we'd go to the Psalms and see what the Psalms say about Jesus. Let's talk about that on something deeper. The second psalm was always thought to be a psalm speaking about the Messiah until some rabbis got a little upset that it sounded too much like the story of Jesus. And so they said, well, no, it's a psalm about David. But I, I don't think that holds water. Let's read this psalm. Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up, and their rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. So these first three verses <clears throat> are all about how the nations are going to rebel against God and against his anointed. Now, kings were anointed and prophets were anointed, but the anointed... The word is the Messiah. And so we understand why a lot of rabbis took this as a prophecy about the Messiah. The nations are going to rebel against God and against his Messiah. But then God has a response to that. And the next few verses are all about God's response. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possessions. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. So what's God's response to man's rebellion? He laughs. <laughs> you know, it's like if a little child decides that he's going to turn on you and, and attack you, and, and he's four years old. It's like, what can you do to me? It's even worse than that, because every piece of energy we have, every moment of strength we have, is a gift to us by God. How could we ever think that we could thwart God or rebel against him? And God laughs and he says, it's not going to work because I've installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. <clears throat> and then he says, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Meaning that God has set his son as king over the entire earth. And that's what's going to happen when Jesus comes again. And he, he goes on to say, And I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. God's going to win in the end. And anyone who tries to fight against him, he won't win. He'll be destroyed. So then what's the response? The response is, let's not rebel. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son or he will be angry and your way will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. You know, sometimes we look at the world and it seems like the forces against God are so powerful and we think, how is God's gospel going to be able to prevail in this world that's so far against it? But God doesn't wonder that. The only reason God hasn't broken out and destroyed his enemies is because he is patient with us as sinners. And he's waiting for the last ones to come in before he comes again. 
So kiss his son. Give your life to Jesus Christ. It's like the law of gravity. You can't break the law of gravity. You can only be broken by it. God is in control. And he's going to win in the end. And if we want our, <coughs> if we want our life to work out, then we need to find the place that he has for us in that, in all of his plans. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this proclamation of your power. And Father, may we learn to trust you and to rest in your power. Lord, we know that you can do anything you want. We thank you that out of love, you want the best for us. How blessed is that thought. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing. And I hope God has many blessings for you today and tomorrow and in the days to come. Take care.